Hello, hello, hello. This is Adolf and doing a commentary for my level Bolero. It's from Mario Maker 2. So Bolero is code right there for LLFBS9JF. And Bolero is actually based on a song by, um, I think it was like a French artist from the 1800s. And it kind of uh, made him go crazy. So this level may make you go crazy. So I start things off with pretty ominous. You have to go into the um, key door and you don't have an option. You don't have a key, so you have to hit that block. So you have to go this way. There's no other options. And you see this little small little room, square room. And this decoration and the Goomba. You know, Goomba's probably not going to kill you. Um, you have the <sighs> Star Wars reference. You have the high ground. So, you may have noticed that it looks exactly the same. And that's on purpose. Because I made this to be very similar, or actually exactly the same. And if you do go back, you may be confused and be like, all right. I'm going in circles now. What's going on? Then you'll be over here, and it's the same thing, but now the camera is panned to the right, where originally it was panned to the left. So, so now it's panned to the left. And if you go back, it's panned to the right. Now. That's just there to continue to throw you off. I'm gonna keep killing this Goomba over and over again. <laughs> just because it's there. It doesn't deserve to. I could totally avoid killing that. So, you know, the rule. The rule of comedy. You know, do it three times and it's funny. And after that, it's annoying. So, now you get to a checkpoint and a pipe. So, you're gonna go to a new area. And this new area kind of starts you off a little bit scared because you're jumping into, you know, unknown. And you have, you know, a flower and a flying Koopa. And for a first second, you may think, oh, it's the end of the level. And you're like, wait, this is Mario 3 level. So it's not the end of the level because that's how Mario 1 was. So it's just kind of there to give you a goof. And put the seesaw there, but just a little bit over. So you can't just do that. You have to jump. And you have to pay attention as well. Um, to the ghosts, uh, the ring or the circle of ghosts. So this magic Koopa kind of throws things off a little bit because you never know what's going to happen when his spells go. Um, but hey, not too hard. I'm not trying to make this hard. I'm trying to make this an interesting level. So you see that big spike there that's uh, intimidating them there. And you see a door and a wiggler. The wiggler doesn't belong in Mario 3, but you're like, okay. And then it starts over again. And um, that's part of the fun. <laughs> and I just copy and pasted everything to this. So it's exactly the same. Frames and frames and everything there. Um, and I, I put the graphics, you know, the little mushroom there and the, everything to be exactly the same. So that way you don't have to um, think about it. You just know it's that way. And third time the charm, third time it's, it's, it's funny, or it stops being funny after the third time, so... Seesaw is helping, I guess, in theory, for me, it helps you be uneasy because, you know, you see the ghosts there and you're gonna fall down, the little snake here, you know, it helps you out but then it leads you to danger, but then you have time to adjust and to go over here. Now if you jump on this wiggler, it can be a real problem because it can be kind of annoying to get into the door. Um, let me show you. So kind of annoying. Not a lot. 
So you see here that's like a trap where the you know the screen doesn't go that far to see this extra here. So it looks exactly the same. But you may notice that there's a huge ceiling in this area, and you may think um, things up. And you see there that spike going upward. Maybe there's something up here. And yep, the secrets. 10 coin. So now you go into this area here. And this is like, you know... I wasn't really sure what to do. <laughs> Just gonna say it. Um, I put a whole bunch of things there, but I gave you everything you needed, so you don't have to worry about being killed. You have a star, and you have the peace switches, and there is like three rings here, and it's like, you know, going up, and... You have to crotch down and do that. Now, uh, I do have the, the, this, so I can... Well, I can't, actually. Never mind. Um, I was going to say I could use it to hit the blocks, but I can't. But the P-switch comes out of here, so it's not too bad. But this must be a little bit stressful. That you're like, oh my god, I don't have the time. I don't have enough time. I'm gonna have to do it all the way at the beginning. Nope. I mean, you should. Depending on where you hit the P switch, you may run out of time, may not. And the level's ending, and a big celebration. And up here is 50 coins. You fly up here, and that's basically the level. I give you more than enough time. I don't think there's any real super danger of dying besides basic platforming. Um, I just thought it would be fun to have something that kind of messes with your mind. That it kind of drives you a little bit crazy. You're like, what's going on? Is this all a rerun? Is this all a repeat? Am I going crazy? So, like the song, um, it kind of does that. So, you may have heard the song. I found an 8-bit version of this um, on YouTube, and I'm using it here um, as an underneath track. But Maurice Ravel... Uh, made the song way, way back, um, like end of the uh, 19th and early 20th century time frame. So that's it for Bolero. I hope you found it interesting why I made this level the way I did. I hope you play it, and uh, thank you for, again for watching. That's it for me. Bye. Thank you to my patrons. Please comment, like, and subscribe to this channel, and use the notification bell. Thank you. Bye.